Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this video is called Please Affinity. I want to break up with Photoshop, I just need one more feature. So as many of you know, I dislike rental-only software, or to be more precise, software that used to be perpetual license and now is rental-only. There are plenty of cases where rental-only makes sense, but Adobe Photoshop is not one of them. As a friend once said, the problem is that they changed the value proposition. So when they went rental only in July of 2013, I never upgraded and have been happily using my copy of CS6 ever since. Not long after, some new software appeared that got my attention, the Affinity Software Suite. This contains three apps, Photo, Designer, and Publisher, which replaced a number of Adobe products. And like Adobe of old, you pay once, own the software, and decide yourself if you want to update. I've used, for example, Affinity Publisher to lay out all my books, and it's fantastic. Unfortunately, I'd love to use Affinity Photo for my painting, but it's missing one key feature. I've discussed this feature for years on their forums, but have yet to persuade them to add it. And so I'm making this video in the hopes of finally getting them to add the feature so I can move on from CS6 and become a full-time Affinity Evangelist. So what's the feature, you ask? Here's what happens every time I try and open an old Photoshop file in Affinity Photo. And I mean every time, since I use this feature for every painting I make, and so the incompatibility makes converting over my old paintings an impossibility. The feature is a simple one, or at least it seems simple. In Affinity Photo, you can't clip a layer to a group. So let me show you how this works in Photoshop on a simple example. So here are two layers. I have a black circle, and then I have a gray circle. And then I combine these into a group. And so you can move these separately, or you can move them together as a group. And then up here, I have a, another layer, which is a red circle. And I clip that layer to the group. So the idea is I can still move either of these parts of the group. I can still move the whole group together and then I also have this layer on top that I can move as well. So now let me show you how this works in a real production painting. So this painting is from my Story of Ink book project. And you can see here, um, let me turn off the final color correction so we can just focus on right here, the characters. And if you go inside of here, we have, first of all, this is Ink the Robot. And then this is Landis, which is a human. And we have a uh, group here called Landis, and inside of here is Landis, and then here is his cape, and some paint fixes I did on top of that as separate layers. And then inside of ink, we have the main ink body, we have the eyes, the eyes themselves are in fact a series of individual layers, and some paint fixes, etc. And then these two have been both put into a group, and then on top of that group are all of these clipping layers. So you can see what it looks like without. Um, they totally are not integrated into the landscape. So first of all, we start off with some fog. Um, then under here is some painted in lower white fog down by their feet. Then there's a little bit of color correction and a little bit of more color correction. Then a hue saturation, which um, really takes away, puts a lot more orange in there. So it really matches uh, stuff around. And then also a subtle uh, light and darkness layer to make it a little bit lighter up here and a little darker down there, again, to help integrate it into the scene. So you can see with this, um, having um, this sort of workflow is really, really, really powerful. Because what I can do now is, let's say I'm like, okay, you know what? This cape that Landis has, let's say I really want it to be a much larger cape. So if I go here, I can take a brush and I can give him a giant cape. And in real time, you can see that all of these layers here, all of this, um, um, all of the, the, the haze and the fog and everything happen in real time. So I can see the results in real time as I'm painting down on these lower levels, which is super, super helpful. And also you can see here that I wanna keep these as separate layers because uh, the advantage of keeping these as separate layers is for example, I can paint in the cape, behind Landis without having to um, paint around it, um, which means that taking all these and collapsing them into a single layer is just not helpful for this kind of uh, paint style. And then you can also see that because I set it up this way, let's say I paint that and then I'm like, okay, I, I really feel the robot needs to be a little bit further to the right or left. I can take it and I can move it to the right and left as a single large group. 
and all of this stuff stays exactly where it is because this stuff here is all much more about uh, the environment and putting them in the environment than being directly attached to these guys. Well, at the same time, I can go in here and I can paint more fog or less fog. And again, I can see the results of that happening directly on the surface of these two characters. So the people on the Affinity Forum have been really nice trying to find workarounds for this. But basically, the majority of the suggestions revolve around the idea of making a mask for your group and applying the mask to the layer you want to clip. Unfortunately, this means every time you update the group, or perhaps subgroups of a group, you have to remember to update your mask, which not only takes extra time, but you can't see the results in real time, and you also have to remember to do it. And let's face it, it's an easy thing to forget. Plus, with so many of these in my existing Photoshop documents, a workaround would still require major fixes on every document I wanted to move over. So there's really no way around it. I need this feature in Affinity Photo done right in order for me to make the move. So why am I bringing this up again now? Well, apparently Adobe's last two financial quarters weren't very good, and they're seeing a slowdown in their subscriptions, and their Gen AI stuff isn't monetizing in the way that they'd hoped. And imagine that, a few days ago I started getting a notice every time I started up CS6 that says, Adobe really wants you to upgrade to Creative Cloud. Now the warning says specifically, I can still use the old version of my software, but if they start getting desperate for cash, I don't feel I can count on them not doing things to force me onto their Creative Cloud. Far better to just dump Adobe for good and use alternate software that I can own in perpetuity. So this is my video hoping to persuade Affinity to add the feature. For the users watching this video, if you think this feature would be helpful to you, please let Affinity know either on their forums or any other way you can. And if there's an Affinity dev watching this, I'm begging you. If you add this feature, I'll do whole videos on how awesome it is and spread it to my entire network. I'll talk non-stop about how awesome Affinity is in every single thread I can and to every single young artist that I train. Please give me the chance to move away from Adobe for good and use your software as my primary paint package. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. If you want to see more videos like this, please go to neilblevins.com and go to the art lesson section. Or if you want to be notified the next time I post a new video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.